Okay, next up we have assembly of the main gear. And for this, basically, it's a installation of loads of button head screws. You've got to put a load of button heads into here to hold the one-way bearing together. And then we put the gears together, and then this piece in here, and a load of button head screws through there go down into the other side of this into here and bolt into here. So it's just a case of putting loads of button head screws in. Okay, so that's the first lot of screws installed. Now bear in mind the ones that go in here are the 6mm ones and it's the longer 8mm ones that go in the other side and are screwed down through the gear into there. So that's what I'll do next. Okay, and there's the next part done. That bolted into the gear and then the other ones underneath and then the two gears can be put together like so. And there we have our completed main gears ready for installation into the machine. Okay, so we're now at the point where I've got my completed road ahead, I've got my gear uh, and I've actually completed the frames for the model now so it's time to install the head and the gear into the frames and put the whole thing together. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay so a quick bit of catch up as to where we are. I've now fitted the main gear uh, and uh, also got the head. You can see it just at the top here the mask going down through the top main bearing blocks. I uh, had to do some adjustment here on the bottom bearing block. You've got some holes that you can put tools through to manipulate the bottom bearing block so that there's no play in the gear, which means you've got no play in the overall head system. Uh, so that's done. I've also, right at the back here, now mounted up the push rod, the bell crank for the push rod for the tail. So that's all in place and the tail is all working off of that. Uh, what else? Well the head is on the machine as you can see. Um, not much more I can say about that. Next thing we're going to be doing is uh, putting servos into the model. Oh, something else I did do, which you can see on the other side, was I fitted the muffler. Uh, very difficult to get this on camera but you can see there we've got a GP exhaust this is the energy 91 muffler supplied by Midland helicopters modelhelicopters.co.uk and my thanks to them for uh, supplying the muffler uh, apparently makes very very good power with the OS 91HZ which is what I've got in this machine so I'm very much looking forward to trying that out uh, right what else well, next up is fitting servos, and uh, I'm going to be fitting JR8717s initially, so I've got one here. Uh, these are going in um, because uh, the servos that will be in this machine eventually, which are the Torque 9180s and 9188 8-volt outrage brushless servos, they're not here at the moment, uh, and I need this machine ready for a competition in uh, just over a week and a half's time so uh, these servos are going to have to go in first but you know JR8717 is a good servo so not a problem I've got a BLS251 I'm going to put on the tail uh, and I haven't selected my uh, throttle servo yet I'll have to have a bit of a dig around and see what I've got okay so uh, next thing is going to be mounting up the servos Okay, I just want to show how uh, we fit the servo. We've got these uh, little bits like this, and these go on the servo itself with screws through them, as you can see. Now this particular servo has got the extra length um, screws through it. Usually, usually they're a little bit shorter uh, than the one I'm showing you here. Um, they're this length, so you can see a fair bit shorter. Um, but because this particular servo has this double kind of cage that it goes in to space it away from the frame so it sits inside this um, it needs these slightly longer screws and basically these screws go into the little 
orange inserts that we built into the frames earlier um, with some Loctite on them and screw the servo into the frames uh, which I'll show you when I fitted them all. Okay here we have the first couple of servos fitted and uh, side tail servo at the front with the shaft towards the rear this is uh, one of our cyclic servos which will go up to the bell crank which you can't really see at the moment okay there it is so that will go to this bell crank here from this servo and then uh, it's going to be quite difficult for me to show you the other side of the machine but I'll have a go I can't that there we go you can see the other two servos here both again with their shafts to the rear this one here is our elevator servo which goes back to our bell crank back here this is our elevator bell crank here and then this again is a, another aileron cyclic servo going back to this bell crank here all mounted up. This one is the one that's got the double spacer underneath it which you may be able to see. Uh, the others are just mounted flush but this one has the double carbon spacer underneath it. Okay so uh, the next thing I'll do is just do some finishing off around the top of the machine. So there is a, uh, a piece that goes oh, there's a piece that goes up here on the top uh, above this servo which I'm going to put in uh, and I think that's uh, it for the moment okay this is the bit I was just referring to it's just like a little shelf or flat which goes above the servo and it's mounted with these four screws so I'm just going to put that in place on the top of the frames and then in terms of mechanical build the, ma the machine is virtually finished. We've just got some push rods to add to it um, and the servos to set up effectively and the radio gear to install. Okay, so here's the plate that I've just now mounted into the frames. Provides a nice flat area, again, for you to mount some pieces of equipment if you want to. Could make a decent gyro platform. Um, Obviously you've got this space here that you can put a gyro in as well uh, but equally something bigger like a Beast X or um, Skookum SK720 could possibly go on here. Okay really quite a lot to talk about in this next section because what I've done is I've gone ahead and finished off the model completely. Uh, the things that we were doing when I last spoke to you was fitting the main gear and the head to the machine and um, it's a fairly straightforward process uh, we built up our main gear and you basically insert it into the frames as you can see here and then insert the head down through it and you have to loosen off these bolts here in order to get the um, and the upper bearing blocks as well in order to get the main shaft to drop down through this lower bearing and then you can use a tool which you put through the hole here and you basically lever the bearing block up so that you've got no slack in the main gear, no vertical play and then tighten up the bolts and then tighten up the bolts above uh, and then put your bolt through the gear which if I lean this back you can see it in there there we go the bolt through the gear put that through and that secures it in place and then after that really it was just um, installing servos and making up servo rods and putting the servos in place which you can see here so uh, I've got my servos in they're just screwed into place um, made up the rods to go on here and made up the vertical rods here and clicked them on also made up the tail rod as well clicked that into place uh, similar stuff for the other side of the machine and then beyond there it was really just a case of installing all of the radio gear which you can see up front here. So I've got my gyro, CSM720 gyro and a Revlock 30 governor. It's my satellite receiver for my spectrum receiver. The receiver's under here. I'm going to put my pack, receiver pack at the top here. 
And then the other side of the machine, uh, I'm going to have to just turn it upside down to uh, to show you this. So the other side, let's try and get the head onto the, there we go. So you can just about see this here, but this is an LEQ regulator that I've got the other side. Uh, it's my throttle servo here, uh, and the other two cyclic servos. So let's turn it back up the right way again. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, other things to uh, be aware of, there are some little pins that you use which you put through. Um, I'll try and show you. There's a little hole here in uh, the bell crank and there's a hole in the frames as well behind it. And basically you put a pin through there and through the hole, through the hole in the other frame and then through the other arm the other side. And then there's another hole uh, here which goes through the elevator A arm and out the other side as well. Uh, and when you've got those pins in place that's basically your zero degrees pitch perfectly level swashplate position. So what you can do is then align your servo horns and use um, sub trim if you need to to get all of your discs aligned so that you've got a perfect zero degrees pitch uh, and it does, a, does away with the need for swashplate levelers and all that kind of stuff it's just entirely built into the model uh, and took me all of five minutes to set up so a yeah, really good idea that. Um, in terms of other changes I made uh, I did make a change to my um, rotor head upper mixer arm. Uh, I found I was only getting uh, plus or, or minus 10 degrees of pitch so on the upper mixer arm I made a little bit of a change in terms of position of the uh, ball on the upper mix one of the balls on the upper mixer arm and I'll, uh, I'll try and show you that I'll have to uh, reposition the camera Okay, so that's the camera repositioned and uh, basically this is the ball that I moved. It was in this middle position here uh, and I've moved it to the inner position here and that gave me about plus or minus 13 degrees of pitch which I then backed down to um, plus or minus 11. And uh, what I found was that at full pitch with the cyclic stick in the corner my swash plate was actually hitting the pins on the bottom of the head block. So I needed to get a bit more pitch range so that I didn't have the uh, swash plate moving up so high on the shaft. So to achieve that I moved to this inner ball here. That gave me the extra couple of degrees uh, which allowed me to then move the swash plate down the shaft a little bit away from those pins and I can now put all the sticks in the corners and I don't get any binding. So that was just a, a small change I've made just to get the pitch range that I want. Okay, so in terms of video that I can actually do in my office here, um, that's pretty much it. I'll do a video at the field where I can actually get around the machine a bit better, but in terms of stuff I can show you on camera in my office now, the machine's just too big and unwieldy to manoeuvre it to, into positions where you can get a decent look at it. So uh, I'll do a, another video at the field, uh, give you a really good look around the machine now that it's built, um, and then... Uh, we can uh, have a look at uh, filming its maiden flight and seeing how it gets on.